Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise CNA. Today I just want to show you how you can overlay moving averages to normalize the trend, I would say. Now what we're looking at here, this is uh, a uh, session. This is a, a, a reporting dashboard that I'm going to run through during the Enterprise DNA Learning Summit. This is in May 2018. This is for May 2018. I'll leave a link below in the description if you want to register for the event. If you register, you get uh, to come to a totally free three-day event, six sessions, um, and you are able to actually download this resource. So really high quality resource that has, uh, you know, is very detailed and, and sh showcases a number of advanced analytical uh, ways that you can utilize Power BI. But what I wanted to do today is really focus in on moving averages because I think there's some really key places where you should utilize moving averages, where they're more appropriate to use or at least overlay on information that you might be receiving from your data. Sometimes, data can be quite busy especially depending on the context in terms of uh, in terms of the way you might be looking at it like you know you might you you potentially would be looking at something on a daily basis where the things that are happening from day to day don't matter as much as the actual underlying trend which is occurring or appearing in your data and that's where moving averages really come into play quite nicely uh, especially when you use them in power bi now uh, I've already created some moving averages and what I want to show you is just how you can reuse them in this case and reuse them relatively quickly to achieve additional insight really fast okay so I'll quickly go through what the moving average uh, combination or combination of DAX formulas actually does um, but it basically does what you would think right it looks at any particular day and then opens up this time window in the future and that's what dates and period does it goes in looks over a certain it goes and opens a one month window and because we then have um, uh, some our sales being calculated in average x basically we're looking at every single day for the last month because that's the window that we've opened up we're working out the total sales and then we're averaging up all of those sales per day that's basically what we're doing okay and if you think theoretically that is what a moving average is okay so um so it is basically doing exactly what you you if you just think sort of holistically what a moving average is calculating this is what this combination or pattern of formula is actually doing now the really great thing is is that what we can do inside of power bi is that we don't need to go and recreate the wheel every time we need to go and create a moving average right what we can do is we can copy and paste this particular formula and just rearrange things slightly so you see here that this is actually calculating this uh, up total sales and you'll see in this particular visualization that i'm that i'm selected on here and i'll just break out a bit bigger is where we are looking at total sales by day but then i've overlaid this average so that we can actually see we can actually see okay well this is the true trend this is the average trend um, and and you can see here that it's slightly increasing based on the particular time frame we're looking at and based on what we've got selected in our in our visualization the same can be said with this one in particular here so you see here that this is actually this is a, a moving average of our margins that we are achieving okay is doing exactly the same logic we have just gone and changed the profit uh, we've imp implemented profit margin instead of total sales and then now we have the, the moving average of margins and then i've incorporated that into this visualization down here and you can see here pretty stable even though you know every single day the margins are jumping around quite a bit could be dependent on lots of things could be dependent on regions could be dependent on the products that we're selling etc but in, in this case it's good to have the moving average there because we can see that it's actually pretty stable now, how can we create these additional ones? Well, I've actually gone and recreated the profit margins moving average, right? So I've gone and copy and pasted it into this particular measure, and then I have uh, just changed around that to total profits, and I've got profits in there, so pretty straightforward. Then to add it in, so you see here I've got my profits. You'll see that this is actually profits by day. Well, I'm going to add this into my visualization. I'm going to drag this down into my visual here. And you'll see that I just need to adjust a few things just to clean it up. Uh, and then I'm going to change my color here. And so you see now, that's probably a bit hard to see. So I will just change the color of that one. To a bit of a lighter shade, I think. And you'll see now that we are we can identify the trend here too and so we probably want to expand it you see that it's slightly increasing whilst the profits per day were just jumping around quite a bit as well now 
the last thing I'm going to show here is we, I'm going to show you how to do it totally. So you see here that we have customers. So total customers over this time frame is 175. But obviously we ha we have our customers are changing day by day. How many actually come to purchase off us, right? So I want to see if this trend is actually changing. So all I need to do here though is come in here. I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to create another measure. And I'm going to paste it in. And then I'm going to go customers one month moving average and then all I've got to do here is change my total customers like so right that's all you got to do so you can reuse it rearrange it uh, and, and and get it into um, some uh, some other visualization some other insight and so I'll put that in there and then I will um, take out the legend and I'll just change the color just a touch and now you'll see that, that I've got a moving average trend line basically of customers how many customers we actually are seeing per day and you can see here that the tooltip is actually appearing and, and showing me you know this is more constant this is way more constant than the daily and um, the daily change and i think this is this is key right this is a key situation where you would want to use moving averages where they showcase trends way more effectively than if you were just showing things at a daily level because at the end of the day you don't want you don't want to get caught up in noise right you want to get caught up in the true trend um, and when you combine the trends there with all the other things that you can do in power bi you know there's there's just so many that you can find the right insight you can get to the right insight and that's and that's the key thing so i just wanted to show you how you can reuse it and that's the key breakout part here. Obviously, you join the Learning Summit. You know, if you do want to register for that, I highly recommend it. using Power BI. It's going to be so much to learn about about it and high quality development. That's what I'm all about: high quality Power BI development. Um, certainly register. Uh, but this was just a very small part of the uh, of the whole thing. It's going to be six workshops for about an hour long each. So there's just, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, content and material to watch and learn from. But the key is is uh, about the learning summit and uh, and and where this differs from all the other content that Enterprise DNA puts out or basically anyone puts out um, you know, anywhere on on Power BI. It's all about how to build high quality practical solutions from start to finish okay it's not just showing one thing uh, you know one isolated thing like a lot of the um, uh, the deep dive tutorials on enterprise DNA TV it's how do you build this overall great solution compelling solution uh, from from data in its rawest form so that's you know that combines using the query editor building a good model creating the right DAX formula um, creating good visualizations or combining all of these things to create um, really effective reports and models that um, that drive action, that drive positive uh, positive actions. Okay, so I'm going to round things off there. Hopefully, you can reuse this uh, combination of formulas, this pattern of formulas, um, you know, and use them as as quickly and as effectively as I showcased today. I think that you'll find lots of places in your models where you can do that. All the best. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon.